Yo. What up? All right. Um, so, uh, we got season three, episode 10 of the Ricky Gervais Show. Hmm. Okay. Okay. What we got? This is society. Ah, uh, society. Yeah. Yeah. We're all a part of it. Yeah. 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 We live yeah. in a society. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, man. You ready? Yes, I am. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. Huh? In ancient Greece, every year, 500 people would be selected from that Grecian society, and they would have to sit there that year, and they would propose laws, and everyone else would vote on them. Now, if you're in that position, wow. right, you're called up, what rules and laws are you instigating? You might go, right, I, I, want, uh, I want an egalitarian society. I want freedom for people. I don't want slavery. I don't want any sort of oppression. Yeah. Would that be high on your list? Well, you could say, you know, when I worked at Cordon Bleu, there was times when I thought being treated like a slave, eh? Mm. You, you weren't, weren't though, because you were being paid, then you were free. So, different well, what do you mean? I wasn't free. I was on light from, from nine till six. Yeah, you had the choice to leave the job. Slaves didn't have a choice to leave. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, you did, the only yeah. other choice was Tesco, and they'd already turned me down. No, that's not... That's <laughs> not, that's not <laughs> the, no choice, that that's why. The, yeah. That wasn't the lack of choice given to most but the slaves. slaves. the slaves who built the pyramids, that wasn't an option for them. It wasn't like they could go... Um, well, I, I can get a better gig on the Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying... No, you're not saying anything. You're saying absolute drivel again. Um, <laughs> Here's a little Greek proverb for you. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. What do you think of that? Wow. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm just saying, uh, they're planting a seed. They grow a tree, but the trees take ages. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. That old fella's not going to get any joy out of that. Right. But if he's lucky, yeah. the fella next door might have done the same years ago. So it's all about sort of planting a seed, looking after each other. That's great, actually. It's not, I don't think it's directly it's almost. It's almost. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think he means that future generations. But yeah, if the, if future, yeah, the, if the next door neighbour had done that, then uh, yeah, that works as well. But, that's, yeah. but you seem to agree that that's a good point. Do you agree that seems a good point to you? Um. But I'm, I'm sort of guessing he, he enjoyed gardening anyway. Part of the enjoyment was in planting that seed. Oh, it's the old metaphor problem again, isn't I know, it? Yeah. It's not specifically <laughs> about trees. But, but, but as a metaphor, what he enjoyed is the fact that he's added to society and human life and he's got a legacy and all that. But so. by the same time, when I went to Ibiza, mm. right? now there they have motorbikes, people flying around on them, people don't wear helmets. You might even get three people on a moped. I saw a farmer with a goat in a basket. They don't care. They're whizzing around at high speeds. A lot of deaths there. Yeah. Um, and they'll have a lot of them, them see that those areas where someone's come off, been killed, people put flowers there. Yeah. And because that happens a lot, it's a lovely green island. Now here, we're saying where are we? What? You're saying what? that all the deaths make it nice because it's flowers. It makes it lovely. Because there's loads of flowers everywhere. So with death, comes beauty. So that's another metaphor, you can have that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the most now, tortuous things I've ever... That was extraordinary. Uh, look, look at London. That was extraordinary, Carl. <laughs> right, Carl. Carl. Well, look so, at London, but though. Let's let me finish point. my point. Let him finish his point. Let him finish his point. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Right, London. A councillor with his clipboard. <laughs> Need a speed bump here. I saw someone doing 35. Put some traffic lights there and a pedestrian crossing. Mm. Pelican crossing there as well. And a speed camera. Right. Horrible and grey. Okay. No flowers. But you still see flowers left behind where people have died in terrible accidents. Not you see that all ones. the time. He's stuck to a lamppost with an elastic band round him. <laughs> they don't look nice. He's knowing the quality of flowers. <laughs> yeah, but the point wow. is the one is Some 15-year-old got run down and you're disappointed at the quality of the flowers. Look at this, Dan. 
Feather lost his head here. Geraniums? Uh, Geraniums for Feather lost <laughs> bloody head? Well, <laughs> that's so we have to, we have to encourage that, gun crime so that people get shot uh, in inner cities and then we can put flowers up and beautify the area. Is that no, what you're but saying? If an area's nicer to look in, nicer to be in, if it's nicer looking, um, you don't get people speeding around like lunatics. Because they go, I'm not in a rush, I'd quite like to slow down well, This is so complicated. So now what you're saying is, because an area is grey and gloomy, people speed <laughs> down out of it. In the course of doing that, they knock people down. But then flowers are put up, which makes the area beautiful, thus stopping people driving around at speed so death no longer occurs. Well, they keep up to getting out of their cars to, to put down flowers. And <laughs> <laughs> they get knocked down. Yeah, yeah. Well, other people on their way to put some flowers down. Yeah. Just sometimes people have to die, don't they? There was a fellow outside our house. Ah. We had a lamp coat. He had a helmet on. But his head come off. <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh at a man's head coming off. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. <laughs> he had a. He, he had a. Oh, God! There's a man. That's the idea house. He had a lamp post. He had a helmet on. But his head come off. <laughs> so you're saying that because in that one instance, the helmet did not save his life. His head was in great condition. It's just not attached to his body. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying to you. Sometimes people have to die. Uh, How far do you take all this stuff of, of, you know, safety gear and slowing down and wear bright clothes at night? And it's just too much. Very important point. You see, do you think someone should be made to wear a crash helmet? They're only hurting themselves. Uh, crash helmet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you should get fined for not wearing one. But oh, yeah, not just protecting him. He could be a father with two kids. So you're going, oh, let him, oh, he didn't know I was him. let him, let him get brain damage. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying, <laughs> we're, we're over the top in this country. No, but you, so you're saying, sort of if you're thing. saying, no, if he doesn't want to wear a crash helmet, let him not wear a crash helmet. He smacks his head in. He's a vegetable. He's like that. I'm sitting at home like that. And yet the two little kids come to you. You're in charge, don't forget. We've put you in charge of society here. And they come to you, <laughs> two little kids, they go, oh, President Pilkington, what? why did you let my daddy wear that? I don't know where the crash helmet went. I didn't. We paid there. We put leaflets through the door. We had adverts on the telly on the show. Yeah, but... but it's your dad's fault. But why wasn't it? <laughs> because he might... It's, it's not the world we live in, Sonny. Yeah, he's, now I haven't got a daddy. Has he got an helmet at all? Have you seen he's an helmet he's, knocking about? He's, he's a vegetable yeah. now. Yeah. He didn't want to wear a crash helmet, but why didn't you make him wear a crash helmet? It wasn't just him, it was us. <laughs> why, did, why did you turn my daddy into a vegetable? Where's your mum? I'm left, but you can't get home. I just think, you see, this is the problem. Everyone's looking for someone to blame. Uh, yes, but this uh, is interesting, though, because you, you were particularly callous to that little four year old boy. He seemed yeah. so sweet and adorable. <laughs> yeah. But why wasn't he giving this stick to his dad? Well, his, his dad's, dad's dead, he's a vegetable. vegetable. He's dead, he's good as dead to him. His dad. Went within the law. It was not the law to wear a crush helmet anymore because you said, forget it, I don't want a nanny state. I don't want, <laughs> if you wear a crush helmet or not. He wasn't a responsible parent. He hadn't thought it through. But this is your job. Some people aren't responsible. <laughs> Society keeps them in <laughs> track. Wrong with that. This was your, you were in charge. You should have made him wear a crush helmet. He had two kids. We've heard from one of the kids. What's the other one's attitude? Is he, is he younger? He's a bit, he's a bit younger. Is he he's even younger still? <laughs> Yeah. President Pilkington, oh. my brother's crying now. <laughs> she shouted at him. I wish you'd have made my daddy wear a crush helmet. Why didn't you make your daddy wear a crush helmet? Well, <coughs> listen to me, cos I'm not in charge of this. He didn't listen to me. Yeah. It seems like a bit of a, a numb nut, to be no, honest. No, he did listen to me. <laughs> he did you made a new him. rule saying people don't have right. to wear crush helmets. Right. What? And he listened what, what, to you. Did he, did he pop shoes on in the morning when he went out? Or did yeah. he need to be here to tell him to do that as well? Yeah, so oh, so he has got some common sense then. Oh, yeah. oh right, interesting. Yeah. So he can be bothered with his trainers, yeah. but he can be bothered with helmets. No, I haven't got a daddy. Jesus. <laughs> Why can't they just put a link through saying yeah. that? Because no. it, they're not just the victims. The dead person isn't the victim. 
We've talked about it before. You know, people who smoke know that it's dangerous, but why is that still legal? And yet people know that and they still smoke. Fat people know that they're going to get out of breath. <laughs> and yet they still eat more. But because that's what I'm saying. Why don't you stop fat people eating? If you've got a smackhead and you really love him, you intervene, you grab him, you put him in a cupboard, you go, you're not coming out. He goes mad for about a year and he thanks yeah. you for it. Yeah. So block fat people in a cupboard. And just put carrots under the door. What? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there's got to be some responsibility. Now, yeah. if it's your own fat kid, stick him in your cupboard. But what I'm saying is, as a counsellor, I'm not spending taxpayers' money on cupboards to put the fat kid in. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> in China, you can only have uh, one child, yeah. can't you? Is that something you feel we should bring in here? Damn. Uh, yeah, I think we, we've got to... Um, I don't know about one kid. I, I just sort of concentrate on who can have a kid. Okay. As opposed to, you know, if someone's got a load of money yeah. and they're good at looking after kids, let the don't have as many as she wants. Mm-hmm. But but then, oh, yeah, but then, <coughs> so social engineering, you want to Yeah, but then, but hold on, though. Well, what you is... said then, if you bring them into a poor family, what's the point? What good is that for anyone? It's not good for the people who've had the kids. So who's deciding who's allowed, who's allowed to have how many kids? Yeah, Are you deciding? I was, I was uh, brought into the poor family, wasn't I? Hmm. What? I was brought into a poor family. No, no, I'm talking, I'm talking really poor. So, third world? No. What, poorer than that? Poorer than no money at all? I just mean like the people who I've told you about on the estate sometimes who had that one who chased cars and stuff. He <laughs> wasn't happy. They didn't care if he was there or not. What's the point? Right. So hang on, so let's imagine so, that Ricky and I, our husband and wife, we've come in, right? What's your questions to us to establish whether we were allowed to have a couple of kids? <laughs> Oh, that's, um, that's and me and my husband, uh, we, we can't have children. Because um, uh, he's, he's got no sperm at all. Okay. He had one sperm, <laughs> it was, it was t- ridiculous, it was awful. It just came out like a dead anchovy. Right. And what? I mean, had to have 300 million tiny ones, and he had one big one, it was horrible. I had to pull it out, it was like a leech. And, uh, <laughs> and also, I, uh, it was no, I haven't got a vagina. So there was no place to put... You smooth there, like an there. Yeah, it was just like, I don't know. Uh, but we, we love children, and... Um, uh, uh, we wonder if we, we could um, have a child. What do you do for a living? What, what do you do for work? Uh, I'm a rapist. <laughs> 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 Can I just post the bodies? Right, uh, well, fill out this form. Uh, you should have clarified a rapist murderer. Uh, fill out the form. He does it in the wrong order as well. I must yeah. say so much. No, number of times I've disposed of the body, he said, I haven't made that. <laughs> Just wondered uh, what else you need to know about us. We, because even though that I... That was uh, our little joke, by the way. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't write. Course, I, don't know. I, work in, uh, I work in an office. I work in an office <laughs> um, in, in, uh, in town. But I, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a housewife. She's a housewife. I'm making a little nest for when we have... Uh, we adopt a little... A little child. We don't earn a great deal of money, but we're good parents. We're we very think good parents. You know, what's, what's that based on? Are, are we well, we're good thing? people, you know. Mm. I mean, aside from a few naughty jokes, we're God-fearing people. <laughs> we believe that um, uh, God is watching all of us, and um, we believe in, in the Old Testament. And, and sometimes uh, He tells us to, to kill and rape. Yeah, sometimes He does. Yeah. <laughs> we're joking again. We're joking again. We, we, uh, we don't believe in God. We're um, we're a, a, from an atheist and believe that our time on earth is is, is all we have, and then when we die, we become worms meat. Right. Uh, we filled but up we've, already, we've already painted the back bedroom, that's ready for the little child. We painted it black. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we want our child to be a Satanist. Uh, joking again. <laughs> little joke from us. Little little joke. We want him to be an accountant. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gay accountant. <laughs> There's too much in society where people are pressured to be heterosexual, so we're, we're going to try and make ours a homosexual. Right, so we filled out the form. Filled out the form. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pop that in, get it processed. Mm. Okay, but what kind of questions are you going to ask us? None, none really. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just my job. You're happy. You're Just happy my with job us. to pass the forms. We've on. passed the interview. Because that's sort of where we're living now. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> God. <laughs> A rapist. You've obviously heard of the famous Rosa Parks incident, in uh, which um, she was obliged <laughs> to move on the bus from where she was sat to somewhere else, and she chose not to, and she was arrested for it. Became very much a, a sort of figurehead of the civil rights movement. Had you been travelling on that bus, what would you do? Um, um, am I far from where I'm, I'm getting off? <laughs> <laughs> so once again, you can't just nip out at the next stop so you can wash your hands of the whole affair. No, you're on that bus. You've still got a number of stops. 
So you've got to stay on that bus. So you've seen this bus driver demanding that she gets up, gives up that seat. Maybe she's given up that seat for you. Uh, I'd probably go, it's all right. I'm standing there, all right. What if Suzanne wasn't allowed to sit with you on buses? What if, what if now a law came in that women were second-class citizens and she can't come with you? Wouldn't you go, no, fuck that, she's sitting with me? I'd say uh, we're only going around the block. We've been to the, to the shopping centre. we only 15 minutes. Can you take that bag with you? Cos there's no one sat next to you down here. I'm a bit crammed in up here. There's more blocks in the bus. <laughs> See you in a minute. Carl, let's put this to... to you, I mean, obviously, this is too much for your head to... You're on a bus, <laughs> right, and there's a few white people, and they're... I'm the driver. And they're being racist <laughs> to a, a black kid. Right, I'd go... If I'm driving, I'd go... This, lads, stop that, will you? If you're going to be racist, can you get off at the next stop? <laughs> well, you know, we've, all, we've, we've all had a tough day. It's the end of the day. We just all want to go home. We've all been working. Uh, uh, he's not in your way. He's sat in his own seat. Sit back. Calm down. Have enough. Surely you come... Surely you want to be on the side of right. I'm just doing my job here. I'm sat driving a bus. I'm driving a bus for 30 quid a week here. I'm getting a load of grief uh, off some people right, at the end of the but day. But think bigger than the bus rule. It's not just a bus thing, all right? Just imagine that you're not a bus driver. All right? No, but think that's what bigger. we're talking about here. But yes, but Ricky's trying to make a point. It's an analogy again. It's about you taking some kind of responsibility that could you put must you in know harm's what, way. Yeah. That could mean that you've got to stand up to danger or to bullies. If someone's, if, if someone's attacking Suzanne, she goes, Carl, help, you go, no, he, no, I can get rid of it. I know the full story here, but this is what I'm saying what about Rosie, story, Rosie, what's it? I'm just saying, she sat on the bus. How did it work? She I'll got on the bus, she sat where she wanted. No, I'll tell you how it worked. It was uh, up to the driver's discretion to change where black people could sit, depending on the number of white passengers that got on. So she sat in a seat, so more and more white passengers get on, so this bloke decides, well, no, actually, this is no longer the black section, there is no black section, because there's enough white people, you've got to stand up. Mm -hmm. And she decided, no, I'm not going to get up. It's my right to be able to sit on this bus as a person, as a human being, not whether or black or white. And that was why she got arrested. On a different bus, on a different day, it might not have turned out that way. That's what I'm saying. It might have been, you know, someone else who goes, get off, who's, who's been in the right mood, might have been in the pub all afternoon. And she's there going, I'm not moving, and he's, he's fed up, he's, had, he's not too ill with it. So, so, so she's pissed off. She's pissed off. No, no, she's no, 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 no or is she just a trouble causer? Because she just seems like, you know, uh, I'll do what I want. Now, that's fine. You'll always get people who do what they want, and they do change the little rules along the way. But I bet she, when she was doing it, it wasn't like a big stand-up, this is, this is the day I'm going to do it. It's just happened to... She was fed up that day, she didn't want to get up. Lazy. She <laughs> <laughs> must just go around law-breaking all the time. And she's remembered now because she's made a change about bus seats. But when she got up that morning, did she say, I'm going to do that, or has she been fly-tipping before she got on the bus? <laughs> is she just, is she just a, a, no, you know... Look, she's not a troublemaker. She's someone who already had a burgeoning interest in the civil rights. I mean, I really thought the Rosa Parks incident was pretty cut and dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Y
And I was like, well, stop him then. So stop she... him! <laughs> you don't interfere with fucking Rosa Parks. Why are you interfering with <laughs> Because one, I didn't even know they didn't get on, to be honest. <laughs> Because I've, I've, they, they were sort of wrestling, and uh, my arms were wet, so I could do anything. I always wanted to do it with a baby. <laughs> so she's, she's there, I say, break, separate them. Uh, so she uses a tea towel, flips and flip. Clever. Good right. thinking. The, the wasp goes its own way, the cricket's sort of jumping about a bit. But um, who was fighting it? So I'm sort of saying that is really weird, because wasps are changing quicker than anything else that I keep me eye on. OK, well, that's just your theory, and it's not based on it. Well, I told you a couple of years back, I saw one eating chicken. The shot right. didn't it. <laughs> so anyway, so now they're causing trouble with a cricket. Whoa, how do you know it was the wasp ball? This is prejudice. Why do you think it was the wasp ball? What, what, what if the cricket would have started it? What if the cricket's got a society go, we hate wasps, we hate their stripes. We hate them. If they come here, fight them. If everyone comes down here, fight them. How do you know it wasn't the cricket that started that? Well, I suppose at that time I didn't, but since... Oh, substitute so information's oh, come okay. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so anyway, like Columbo, uh, yeah. so I saw all that, we broke it up, the cricket was sort of shaking a bit. <laughs> Definitely not! Definitely not! It was shaking uh, a bit, yeah. so I sort of prodded it, put a little leaf over it, it was a hot day. So I put a leaf there so it doesn't get overheated. I love I'll this, like it's during the marathon. It's got, a, <laughs> it's got bars on the leaf. It's so, on the leaf, but now it's just walking over the little medal. So Suzanne, we, you know, we leave it for a bit. Leave it? What did you say? An hour, about, about, about left it for half an hour. Yeah. What did Suzanne want to do? She wanted to interfere, did she? she wanted, what did she want to do? Just sort of like... Um... No, she just sort of said, leave it, stop messing with it. It's probably a little bit knocked out, a little bit stunned. Sure, let's right. get on with our lives, she said. Yeah. So I put the leaf on it. We go off. And half an hour later, I get back in and I'm gonna, I said, I'm going to go and see the Where'd cricket. you go? Where'd you go? Just for a walk. Porch. So I've been out, back in, have a look. Cricket's still there. Noticed <laughs> one of its legs go. Oh. <laughs> Don't know if the wasp did that or the tea towel flick. Right. Well, this is when <laughs> I got the computer out. Right. Had a look. What happened is the wasp um. apparently does this a lot. <laughs> And it stings them in the head. Right, well, not this particular. There wasn't a little profile of this particular wasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, just, it's just an incident that just happens a lot between wasp. uh, wasps and crickets. Right. right. So uh, it, it stung it in the head, <laughs> and what happens is it's that whole thing that we talked about before, where it lays an egg. Right. So I was I was sort of having a look, seeing if I could see any sort of holes in its head, uh, and it just kept sort of moving its one leg, like oh, I can't get on the leg. We've got one big leg. One big leg at the back now. It's normally got two um, that it uses to jump. So you were worried that crickets aren't aware of the dangers of wasps? I just had a look online and saw that, oh, it's a popular thing that happens. It's sort of like a bit of a mugging. Um, he said you can leave them for about half an hour, they normally come round and they don't know they've had an egg put in their head. But There's no way it said leave them for half an hour and they come round, they don't have an egg put in their head. There's no way it said <laughs> But he that. said they, they normally stun for about half an hour. Have you had an egg put in your head? <laughs> Like an ostrich egg, but it's coming out the top. So anyway, so I picked it up, I placed it under a little tree, I said it's in the shade again. Mm. No wasps can see it there, let's just leave it. Mm. But you've just left that cricket to now die in agony when that mm. maggot goes round his head and comes out of wasp and leaves the carcass. Well, this is when Suzanne came up and said it wasn't moving. I sorted it. You sorted it? You sorted it. What do you want to do with it? Well, I said, what do you mean you sorted it? She said, oh, we it's best that we don't tell you. She killed it. Well, sorry, sorry, sorry. She killed it. She sorted it. Wait, 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 wait. Do you think that we're in the Mafia and we're being wired? <laughs> Say what happened. No, well, she just said she sorted it. And I said, what, sorted what? Because I'd forgotten about it at that point. I was painting. Oh, she said, she right. said the, the cricket. Right, what do you think she meant when I sorted it? Well, by the look on her face, the way she said it, I've known her for long enough, so I know that she meant it's not good news. Yeah, so what, so what happened? So from that, I took for granted she means... Say it! I've stopped, I've stopped it being... It's no longer in misery. So what did you say? <laughs> what? What did she do? She, she crushed his head with a stone. <laughs> she got a tiny head ah! and washed it, because that's where all the action is, isn't it? <laughs> so she said it was it was too cruel watching it sort of shaking about with its one leg and stuff. Mm. She had to kill it. I imagine I had this vision that one day <laughs> Suzanne just having to say to his parents, um, 
<laughs> I'm sorting it. I'm sorting it. <laughs> Sort out <laughs> Rosa Parks. <laughs> this nigga would intervene in a wasp in the cricket fight, but he wouldn't intervene <laughs> in a Rosa Parks situation. <laughs> and Carl has an uncanny love for nature and bugs and yeah. cricket. It seems like Suzanne does too. You know? Uh, Suzanne loves Carl. Yeah. But I don't know if she loves everything. <laughs> Carl says or does <laughs> or maybe she does I don't know yeah yeah they need to show together Carl and Suzanne yeah yeah I'd watch a reality show that yeah I don't <laughs> think uh, I don't think Carl would be a good president of society nah like, uh, we'd all it should go to hell <laughs> Dude, very quickly <laughs> he has no patience he has no patience uh. and he and, and really <laughs> Those two little boys. I mean, I, 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 I like I like that he gives us free choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah. like, wear a helmet. You can decide if you want to buy the crush, the crush, the crush for resistant or the, you know what I mean, or the other one. Your choice. Yeah. <laughs> he was all telling the kids. What he's... <laughs> yeah, he was. Like, put you at home. <laughs> Where's your mom? She left from the dad accident. <laughs> uh, what do you yeah. say? I'm put off. He said, I'm not. I'm not. Put in fat kids. Put 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 the fat kid in your own cupboard. Yeah. I'm not using taxpayers' dollars to put a fat kid in our cupboard. <laughs> I, I agree. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Uh, Carl's definitely a treat, man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely wasn't that run any society. Definitely, uh, you know, a great part of it. Yeah, I mean. I think Carl, I don't know what Carl's world would look like if Carl was to run the world. I mean, I think it'd be peaceful. But I, I think we'd have our issues. <laughs> I think we'd be peaceful. I don't think it'd be a utopia, though. Yeah, we'd have. I don't know. What do you say? He thought slavery was working at Cordon Bleu. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like slavery. Uh, it's a little bit worse than that, Carl. Ah, <laughs> uh. yeah, man. Yeah, the way Ricky and us <laughs> and Steve they be going at him, man. It'd be funny. They be trolling the hell out of him. Just see, like, what are you gonna say? What are you? <laughs> <laughs> like Ricky's so quick to kind of like. But Steve, once Steve was like, no, let, 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 let him carry on. And let's, let's hear this thought. And let's hear yeah. this thought. Let's, let's hear this. <laughs> let uh, Carl dig himself deeper. Yeah, man. Yeah. It is. Carlism. <laughs> <laughs>